Hey, hey, what's up? What's good? It's BQ. It is the Impact Lounge here on YouTube. Number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. And I am back up in the place to be with a mailbag episode for you guys. Don't forget, don't forget there is a brand new Patreon. It is free for the month of March. If you hear a podcast on this channel, uh, whether I'm reviewing Impact or I'm doing a QA, and a uh, you can get it ad free on there. And there's some other content I, I'm doing as well. I'm, uh, my opinion pieces and, and things of that nature. Uh, you're going to catch on there. So here on the channel, you're going to get my reviews. Uh, but as far as, as far as my my uh, my thoughts, my real deep thoughts, my raw emotional opinions on things, you're going to get a little bit more of that on the Patreon. So uh, you can check it out at patreon.com backslash BQ Speaks. Um, when I'm done here with this mailbag episode, I'm going to be uh, doing an opinion piece on uh, Ty Valkyrie and my thoughts on her AEW debut. Um, I'm also getting ready to do uh, a little bit of fantasy booking, how I would have booked Kylan King. And then um, one thing that's been pretty popular is a TNA reaction or total, total nonstop reaction, I should say, where uh, I listened to the or I watched the first episode uh, on Destination America for the first time. And I reviewed it and compared it to Impact Now. And I'm getting ready to do a TNA replay episode this weekend where I'm looking back at the pop TV era that I first started reviewing and going to compare that to the current product and how the company's being ran, operated uh, today. All right, so let's get into these mailbag questions. I got four for that ass today. Um, if you're first time here, consider that subscribe button. All right, so let's jump right into it. Number one, who should feud with Trey Miguel next? I can tell you who I think should. Um, and let me throw this out there. Last night's episode, I'm recording this on Friday. I have not watched last night's episode. All right, so let's throw that out there right now. I know a couple things that happened on it, but I haven't seen it yet. Going to be watching it today, recording my review tomorrow. So maybe if you're watching the episode, there is a challenger. I don't really know. Who do I think it should be? I think it should be Jonathan Gresham. He is, since, since signing with the company, he has done... Nothing noteworthy on television. It seems like they bring him in to wrestle good matches, and there's no stories. There's no feuds. His feud with Mike Bailey, if you want to call it a feud, was built up on BTI. So only 15 people even knew it existed. Like he's someone that um I think you can get into the main event scene because a company like Impact, you can have smaller guys be the world champion, and it, it doesn't doesn't matter you know with a company like impact it doesn't matter what they you know what they look like how big they are how small they are how tall they are how short they are how fat they are whatever like if you can work you can work and you can be in the main event scene and i think he needs to get up to that point so i you know i would love to see him uh wrestling for the x division championship because if you remember when they did the last i, I know it's not destination of um, x but they used to do like the knockouts, knockdown, but they would have like the X division one night only or whatever. If you were to go back and watch them and don't because they stink. But if you were to go back and watch, he cut a promo at the end saying, I will be back here one day, you know, um, and he was a completely different wrestler back then. And I would think it would be so awesome to tap into that. It's part of your library. You love this library impact. So you can channel that, bring it into today and, you know, fulfill a destiny so to speak to to win the x division championship and he could have a rise uh very similar to like rich swan or uh josh alexander where it kind of start and brian cage even you know for that matter started with the x division championship work all the way up to the main event so uh that's what i would like to see what do i think is going to happen though i think we're going to see speedball mike bailey right back in the x division title picture i know it's sacrifice they have a rematch and if you notice what impact does with a few guys, Mike Bailey being one of them, if they lose, they're going to get their win back. You know, um, I think sometimes it's okay for Mike Bailey to lose, but they had Jonathan, Jonathan Gresham beat him, made it look kind of fluky. It's always a surprise roll up. He's going to get his win back. That's just the way they do it with him. Um, and I think they want to see him back in the X division title picture sooner than later. I thought Mike Bailey won it too soon because I think there's a lot of character development we really need to see with him. And then I also thought he dropped it kind of quickly. 
Like, I just, I don't know why he, he had the title to begin with. Very, it wasn't a very mem- memorable run. He had a couple of really good matches, but um, my gut tells me they want him back in a title picture sooner than later. So who should be the guy? I think Jonathan Gresham would be excellent. I think he should beat Mike Bailey at sacrifice. I, I my gut tells me it's going to be 50, 50 booking here, but I think he should beat him and then like elevate him to that next level. Cause and, you know, he's a pretty decent talker too. So that's, that's who I would really love to see. Um, next question. I believe it was about Kenny King. Why do you think Kenny King hasn't received a better push? That's a great question. I have no idea. I think this guy has it all. He can wrestle. He can talk. Um, he's charismatic. He's a reality TV star. And I've, I've told you guys many times as someone who does watch that franchise, the Bachelor franchise, like he's a pretty popular guy within that franchise. He had a lot of supporters, a lot of followers. Like, you know, he has a, a good social media following. Like, I would think you would just try to tap into King, Kenny King a little more. Does it mean, um, you know, 48 year old uh, Samantha who watched The Bachelorette is going to. Uh, you know, turn in to an impact wrestling. No, but um, it's going to help you uh, the more you involve him and the more you make him look good. You know, it's, it's going to help um, for SEO reasons, search engine optimization, um, you know, with with using Kenny King as a keyword and getting Kenny King some momentum and everything. I think it could only help um, the health of their website and health of their uh, YouTube channel and everything. If he was like more heavily featured and he was successful. So I don't know. It seems like um, oftentimes when there's a wrestler that they can rely on, especially to carry a program, it seems like they end up on the losing end quite a bit. And Kenny King got a win the other day, which I wasn't expecting. I was fully expecting him to take a loss. And then he doesn't show up on TV for two weeks. I thought he should have beat, Mike Bailey in that feud. I knew he wasn't going to, but I think it really could have like elevated him because he's another guy that could really get up in that main event scene if they really wanted to to get him there. The the pit fight, I think it was called a pit fight. Uh whatever, whatever. Spooky the cat making his appearance like he always does. I think that's what kind of match it was. Um it was really one of my favorite matches of the year. And I, they just nothing came of it after that. Like it was more to push Mike Bailey, but I, I would have liked to see Kenny King get some kind of momentum off that as well. And that just, just wasn't what happened. Um, but why? I, I just think he's so good at what he does that they're using him as that. Like, okay, we can, we could use him to make other people look better, to put him over, make him look stronger. You know, I think he's just unfortunately falls in that role, but he's capable of, Really good feuds, I think, with whoever he's with. Uh, he made Mike Bailey really, really interesting. You know, for a guy like... He made a feud with Mike Bailey more interesting than I think any other person on the roster could. You know? Compared to when Ace Austin was feuding with with Speedball. like You know? Kenny King is so charismatic. He has the it factor, in my opinion. And he should really be, really be heavily featured. I just, um, for, for a show that kind of lacks personalities right now, like really strong, natural, good personalities. I mean, I I just don't see it. Let's see why he's not. He's a really good actor. That segment he had with Mike Bailey's students, any other person on the roster, if they were to do something like that, there would be bad acting. It would be corny. Like he was really, really believable. It was good. It was it was one of their best back uh, backstage segments they've done in months. You know, so I don't know. It just seems like a lot of the times guys who they lock down to contracts, uh, they get comfortable with, and it's the ones who are there short term. They're like, okay, these guys got to get some wins. It's it's you know, I don't understand, but Mike, um, excuse me, Kenny King should be should be that dude. Uh, has he feuded with Rich Swan yet? I wonder because those two could do. I'm trying to think. I, maybe they've had a match, but I f- I know they haven't had a feud. But I feel like they could do something. No, yeah, yes, uh, that's right. I think uh, a couple weeks ago they had a match, but they could do something really special long term together. I guess is my point. Um, 
Why does Impact Wrestling insist on having so many baby faces that either can't talk for themselves or a personality? You can or you can easily tell the story around. Um, I think it was saying personality you can't easily build a story around. I think that's where it was going because examples: Josh Alexander, Motor City Machine Guns, Mike Bailey. Motor City Machine Guns have a little, little bit of charisma. Josh Alexander, Mike Bailey. Josh is improving week to week. I think Macklin. I've, I've kind of said this a few times over the last couple of weeks. I think he's going to carry that feud. I really, really do. Uh, Josh has had a couple good weeks on the mic, and you know, I. I Probably not giving him enough credit. I think he is showing growth in that area, but Macklin is really gonna, really gonna do that. And I think, um, yeah, they they kind of have a a his, you know, a history of I shouldn't say history. In the last like several years, guys at the top um, haven't had a whole lot of personality. Eddie Edwards, Brian Cage, Josh Alexander, like guys that they're kind of uh, pushing to be that dude on the babyface side. You bring in guys too, like Ken Shamrock, who were you, you were pushing as a main event man. Not, a, I don't know if you were pushing him as a main eventer, but he was up there. He was up in, in the card, you know. Um, no personality whatsoever. And I think we're in an era right now where they are really focusing on the in-ring product, the wrestling, because you know I talked about at the top of the show here, looking back at the Destination America era and the Pop TV era stuff for the Patreon. I would, I, th- that's what really stood out to me is that the re- they really had like, I know it sounds cliche, but larger than life personalities up and down the roster, whether it was the knockouts, the, the males, like they really did. There was so much personality. And now it's like, if you can put on a really good match, we're going to bring you on. If you have a personality that that's a bonus, but they weren't bringing in guys for just for their in ring. And it seems like now, they are leaning towards that a little bit more. I think they want to build up their their library with with good matches, with classic matches. Because I will say the pop TV era, those two years, I think I think it was the end of their first pop TV run. That first year, it was like Meltzer or something that you know. Here's all the five star, four star matches, and and TNA did not have a single one. And someone pointed out like, wow, impact couldn't get on here. And of course there's people, Oh, they're hating. But then if you look back, I was like, yo, they didn't have any like classic matches, you know? So when they're always pumping these old matches on YouTube, they don't bring anything up from that era. From when, like you only see spike TV and then that's it. There was just like this, this, three year period where the wrestling was just like, okay, but they had great personalities. So now we're just getting more into having good matches, good main events. And, you know, I do think again, Josh Alexander is getting better. Uh, I don't think we got much of much improvement from Eddie Edwards on the mic. You know, I, I have mentioned this a couple times. I, ha- I haven't in a couple years, but when I was younger, I was a mumbler. I mean, I, I just... Blah, 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 blah. The way my son is now, I always have to tell him, mumble louder. But I, I was a mumbler. And over time, I had to learn to like really enunciate. And that's why I kind of over-enunciate now, because now it just comes natural for me to do it. But I had to like really learn to enunciate, and I had to push myself to do that. And Eddie gets up, he cuts a promo, he's like, oh, and it's a, and a PCL, and I've, and when we we're gonna go back and and, and uh, li, lish lish. Okay, so there was just no improvement uh with him. Uh with Brian Cage, you know, that that's just another guy that's coming to mind was at the top of the card. He was a baby face, uh just just boring as all hell every time they had him talking. Um with with Josh. I wish they would do less talking with him, make him a little bit more of a badass. I think talking works with him when they're video packages and he's talking about his opponent. But the minute he's back there with Gia or he's having a conversation with Rich Swan, I think that's when he like 
loses that connection with the people. But when he's just looking dead at the camera, it's a video package. There's the music that they love playing and the highlights that they love and all that. Uh, I think he does really good like that. But when he comes into the ring, he's grabbing the mic and all that. I, th I think that hurts him. But, you know, long answer short, I think there's just so much more of a, a focus on the wrestling product right now that the characters kind of come in secondary. And the last question, will we ever see the return of lockdown? So full transparencies, I have no connections at the company anymore. But years ago, during the pandemic, or after the pandemic, yeah, I guess during the pandemic, there was uh, several things they had planned, lockdown being one of them. And that was going to be, a 2020 was going to be, I mean, they were doing the TNA show and lockdown, and they had some some great ideas, some of the guys who were planning on bringing in. Uh, so lockdown didn't happen. And, uh, you know, back then I was told it's, it will happen when this all clears up. Like everything that you saw that was supposed to happen during the 2020, it's going to happen. But really none of it has. We never saw, you know, that TNA show they were talking about. Uh, we never saw lockdown. They haven't even remotely teased lockdown. And uh, when I do my next des destination, excuse me, de next destination America review uh, reaction show, if you will, I believe it's the lockdown lockdown in the UK. No, no, no. That's the pop TV one. That's the next. Hmm. It might even be the next episode on both of those shows. Huh? I don't know. I know I'm going to be reviewing lockdown here soon. So uh, I, I would love to see what the vibe was for those shows back then. And to and to to see, hey, could they pull this off now? You know, it's funny because this is a concept that the fans really like and they've been asking for. And we're just not getting it for whatever reason. Is it because it's not a six sided ring and they don't you know, they don't have the necessary steel cage? Um, who knows? Who knows what the reason is? There's clearly a reason they're not doing it because we're not getting it. And people really really want it. And the lockdown was cool because you could feud for the X division championship in there. It wasn't just about uh, the main event only getting here. Like, could you imagine if WWE had a hell in the cell pay-per-view and you were getting mid card matches in there? Like maybe they couldn't pull it off. It's freaking cat. Maybe a company like that couldn't pull it off, but impact can. And the, and the fan base liked it. So I, I have to believe it's coming back at some point. I have to believe that there's no way we're just not getting it. Do I think it's going to happen anytime soon? No, but okay. My cat, I try my hardest not to bump my microphone and stuff when I'm, when I'm talking to you guys, but uh, I can't, I can't control these, uh, these beasts. Well, really this beast is the only one who follows me around the house and doesn't let me do anything without him. But yeah, as far as lockdown, I don't know, folks, I, I cannot, I, I don't feel like it's going to happen this year. Maybe it will, uh, but we definitely want to see it. Uh, that's all I got for you guys today. If you want to hear this just streaming on Patreon, you can go to patreon.com backslash BQ speaks. If not, I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks for hanging out with me. Oh, peace.